I'm delighted to be joined again by Peter Tugwell, who, as you know, is the chair of uh, the conference. Peter, welcome back. Thank you, Stephen. Could we talk about your work with the WHO Collaborating Centres? Yes, the Collaborative Centres is, is a network uh, of institutions that have been approved by the World Health Organization uh, as doing highly credible and important work to further the mission of the World Health Organization. Our particular focus is on equity. Uh, by equity, we're talking about unfair differences uh, between uh, disadvantaged groups uh, and in that context, what one can do about it to improve their position in, uh, and particularly their health. The group ha is particularly focusing in on the uh, approaches that the health, World Health Organization has endorsed, which is called health impact assessment, and adding the equity lens to that to make it equity-oriented health impact assessment, looking at not only the impacts upon health, but also the impacts upon other aspects of, and sectors, uh, such as housing, uh, such as congestion, such as the climate change, such as pollution. What is CSIH's role with the centre? CSIH has a formal collaboration with the World Health Organization Collaborating Centre on Equity uh, to uh, develop what's called a toolkit, so an equity-oriented health impact assessment toolkit. Sorry about the uh, long, uh, long title. Uh, but what it is is to actually break it down into bite-sized chunks to look at the burden of illness, to look at the interventions that can be carried out to improve equity and to look at the economic components of that, link it to what we call in Canada knowledge translation, which is mobilizing the evidence to actually improve the health of the individuals and that forms a circle which we call the iterative loop for equity-oriented health impact assessment. Quite a badge of approval for the organization to be working with the WHO in this way. Yes, we're very delighted by this, and we've also had this endorsed by the Pan American Health Organization, which is part of WHO, as uh, one of the uh, major initiatives that they're keen to support. So what are the next steps? The next steps is to develop partnerships, because this can only work if you're in partnership with individuals and institutions uh, who are actually working on the ground with uh, disadvantaged groups. So yes, we're working here in Ottawa with uh, the homeless uh, and with the mission, and internationally, we're working with a whole series of disadvantaged groups, for example, in Santiago and Chile, uh, throughout, uh, throughout India, through 15 different uh, groups, uh, and in Africa, where perhaps the need is the greatest, uh, with uh, groups along within sub-Saharan Africa. Peter, final question, and quite a difficult one, I think. Do you think equity as an issue is fully realized by the global health community? Thank you for asking it. It's exactly the right question uh, because uh, on the whole everyone talks about health as an average. And what we're trying to do when anyone's asked about health to ask two questions. Number one, not only should the average health of a community or nation increase, but please always, always, always ask how is the health of the poorest 10% and to be sure it's not getting worse, which frequently it is even though the average is increasing. Peter, thank you very much for that and thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you, Stephen.